Welcome to what has been another very interesting year at the beach. Thank you for joining us in this virtual closing as we celebrate the end of another great year at the junior school. We would like to recognize, acknowledge, and thank the Songhees and Esquimalt nations on whose traditional territories we live, learn, and work. Please stand for, and join us in singing O Canada. Joining me today is Mr. Chad Holtam, Head of School. I would like to invite him to say a few words. Thank you, Jean. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today for the official closing of the Junior School's 2020-2021 school year. Before I begin with my general remarks for the day, I wanted to take a moment to say thank you. The word unprecedented has been used so much over the last 16 months or so that for some of us, it seems like it's lost its meaning. But that doesn't make it any less accurate description of what the last year has been like at our Beach Drive campus and indeed throughout the entire GNS community. But the fact that we have not lost a single day of instruction, not one, over the course of this school year is a testament to each and every person who is watching this today. Whether you are a student washing your hands more than ever before, or a teacher designing lesson plans and then adapting and revising them again, or a parent leading by example, changing your schedules and then changing them again, I thank you. I often say that a school, any school, is only as strong as its people. And when it comes to people, by any measure, GNS has among the finest in the world. When I think back on this school year, I am reminded that for many of us, the year began almost immediately after the last school year ended. I think about the uncertainty that abounded last June. There were so many more questions than answers. What would things look like in September? Would we be able to be back in the classroom, once again able to focus on the in-person learning that is a hallmark of education at all levels in our school? Would we need to create a hybrid curriculum? Or would we need to continue to the virtual learning experience that we embraced in March? I knew we needed to be prepared for whatever eventualities this pandemic was going to throw at us. Over the course of the summer, we struck two teams to help ensure that when we opened our doors in September, every member of our school community would be safe. And I have lost track at the number of times that we've needed to revisit our COVID plans to adapt, to change direction, not to mention preparing to move into a new state-of-the-art facility here at the Beach Drive campus. But here's the thing. As we were revisiting and revising, we were learning. We were learning perseverance. We were learning to depend on each other, to trust each other, and to be people who could be trusted and depended on our students. Each and every one of you, you haven't just survived this year of pandemic learning, you have thrived in spite of it. Over the year, I've received numerous emails and phone calls and messages from teachers, from parents, from other members of our school community who have shared stories of how impressed they have been by your collective resilience. Students, you have met every challenge. 
You have climbed every mountain and you have done it day in and day out with a smile on your face and a skip in your step. I am so proud of everything you have done and everything you have accomplished. The foundation of GNS lies in our core values. These principles guide each member of the GNS family as we ensure the school remains an exceptional place for students, parents, families, alumni, faculty and staff. Truth, courage, caring, individuality and community. These are the values that are embedded in all aspects of the education you are receiving at GNS. One that is preparing you for a world that we cannot yet imagine. And as you move on to the middle school, keep asking questions. Keep challenging what you read and what you see and continue to wonder about the world around you. The primary years program of the International Baccalaureate has prepared you well to do just that. And I hope at some point during this well-deserved summer break that you are able to reflect on your achievements and your growth and that you are to be proud of your peers and yourselves. But even as you reflect on the year that has passed, I want to challenge you to look to the future. I want you to think about the student you are today and about the student and the individual that you want to become. I want you to dream. And as you are dreaming, I want you to think about the steps that you need to take to turn those dreams into reality. I know you can do it. I've seen that you can do it. Now I would like to take a moment to address this year's grade five class who have spent your last day on our Beach Drive campus and are about to move into a bigger pond at Pemberton Woods campus in September. I want to tell you that you are ready. My son Andrew is in grade five and he reminds me of this often. Middle school is a big step up in the world, but you are not making this alone. You are doing it alongside a group of peers who know you and support you. You are doing it with the support of your families who love you and who will continue to do everything they can to ensure that you continue to succeed and achieve next year and beyond. And you're doing it with the knowledge that the committed and compassionate teachers at the beach are handing you off to equally committed and compassionate teachers in the middle school. We are so excited to welcome you to Pemberton Woods in the fall as you continue your journey at GNS. Before I sign off, I want to take one final moment to recognize the Beach Drive faculty and staff. From the bottom of my heart, I thank each and every one of you. I am in awe of your collective talent, of your willingness to go above and beyond for your students, and of your selfless determination to support each other and every member of this community. And I would be remiss if I didn't single out one particular member of staff, Mrs. Jean Bigelow, who as you all know is retiring this year after 33 years as a student, parent, and staff member at this school. Jean, there's no way to overstate the impact you have had, not only on our students, not only on our community, but on a generation of young minds. Your kindness, your compassion, your commitment, your courage. The way you have come to work every day committed to being your best and in turn inspiring others to be theirs. The mark you have left on this campus and this community is truly unforgettable. And we are so honored to be able to name part of this beautiful campus in your honor. It is so very much deserved. And Jean, I am going to miss you. As you depart, I hope you do so confident in what lies ahead for this school that I know you love so much. There is so much to be excited about both next year and beyond. And I know we are both delighted to be welcoming Mrs. Crystal Shea as our next junior school principal. We have an inspiring campus that is without peer anywhere in Canada or dare I say it, the world. We have a truly 
first-class educational experience built on the foundation of the IB curriculum and delivered by the very finest educators. We have a community of alumni, families, board, and others who support our mission in thought, word, and deed. And we have a future that, while uncertain, is bright and full of optimism and hope. We may not know exactly what tomorrow brings, but we know that whatever the challenge, we're ready to meet it head on, together. Thank you all for this remarkable year at GNS. Thank you, Chad, and thank you for your kind words. Today is not about me, however, but before I get on with things, I want to say thank you to the whole GNS community for making the last 28 years the best anyone could have asked for. I will not forget you all parents, colleagues, and most importantly, the students. It was more fun than I could possibly have imagined. Every day was great, even when there were challenges. The support, love, and community made the experiences to be cherished. So thank you, everyone. I am so lucky and grateful for having the GNS community to be my extended family for so long. The junior school has had another great year. It has been so hard to have parents drop off children at the gate instead of joining us on the playground and the hallways of the school. If numbers continue to improve, we will look forward to welcoming you onto the playground and into the classrooms in September. I know Ms. Shea is incredibly excited about joining this community. While I am excited about my next steps, I will miss GNS dreadfully. It is great to know Ms. Shea will be here. She is wonderful and you will love her as much as I do. She is well aware of how lucky she is to be joining GNS and we in turn are delighted to have her and her family join our community. We continue to progress with the primary years program of the International Baccalaureate, providing an enriched values laden program balanced with solid foundation skills for every student. It has been a treat to watch the learning across the school from nature school in the early grades to watching salmon eggs mature and releasing them into the river to learning how to code and finally to watch our grade fives explore topics and take action with their learning with the exhibition. In every grade, in so many countless ways, your children are excited about their learning, challenging themselves in new and interesting ways every day. And to cap this all off, we have this incredible new state-of-the-art building we have so much to celebrate. Our teachers are amazing and the heart of the school. I cannot thank them enough for all they do to make learning come alive each and every day at school. Their hard work and dedication are unparalleled. They turn up for our students every day. They create awesome co-curricular experiences for them all. They gather on the weekends to plan this amazing program and they even appear on weekend afternoon to tend to our bees in our very own hives at Shady Lane. The staff and faculty love what they do and make my job so much easier and more fun. There are no words to describe how important they are to your children and to me. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I would like to extend special thanks to our parent reps this year for everything you've done to make new families feel especially welcome to the junior school. I have really appreciated everything you do so ably and cheerfully. Special thanks to Lisa Sacklas for all you have done for the Parents Auxiliary on behalf of the Junior School. And to you, our parents, this past year and a half has tested you all. From limiting playdates, sleepovers and get-togethers, to mask wearing in the older grades, to quiet holidays with little to no travel, containing the natural energy and enthusiasm of your children, you have done it with grace and good humor. As the world once again opens up, I know you will remember and cherish the family times you have and keep the most important bits as we ramp up again in the fall. Today, we are saying thank you and a temporary goodbye to Ms. Megan Jurevic, our educational technologist. She has been an amazing teacher this year and we wish her well as she welcomes her new little one into her family any day now. We say farewell to Ms. Hillary Cross, who after a year's leave of absence has decided to retire. Hillary's energy, enthusiasm, and interest in all things tech-related will be truly missed. We also say farewell to Mr. Colin Flynn, who has so ably filled in for Ms. Illman 
in music for the past year. He brought his love of music to the classroom every day and we will wish him well as he goes to his new position as a band teacher on the Sunshine Coast. And lastly, we say thanks and farewell to Miss Lauren Kite, one of our wonderful junior kindergarten assistant teachers. Lauren will be greatly missed as she pursues her studies at the University of Victoria. Now normally, we would be presenting certificates right now, but for obvious reasons, this will not be how things go today. You will have been given the certificates by your teachers yesterday as you left for summer. Now you will see on the screen each of your children as I tell you about their year. Please enjoy hearing about how the year has unfolded for each grade. Junior Kindergarten. How does one fit in a few short lines, 10 months of friendships, learning and laughs? It seems it was only September, meeting new friends and new names to remember. Not quite sure just what was in store, air high-fiving us as you came through the door. Welcome, welcome, this classroom is yours with so many exciting things to explore. The special helper can feed the fish and share the jobs with friends if they wish. Making elephant toothpaste? Just ask us how. We're conducting experiments. We're scientists now. We made ice cream cake in kinetic sand, grated nutmeg and cinnamon on graters by hand. Rain or shine, we love it outside, climbing and running on scooters to ride. Each Thursday we donned our waterproof buddies to keep us dry as we played and got head to toe muddy. Nature school is the most magical time, paths to explore, oak trees to climb. We roam through the park and its wide open spaces, stopping to play in our favorite places. We settled in happily in our lovely classes, on the beach watching all the west coast marine life that passes. Art, gym, music, French, and beach time. Somehow in five days, we could all fit it in. Oh, but what fun we had despite the golden rule. Whatever you do, no fun at school. So dear junior kindergartners, this you should know. Wherever you are, wherever you go, you've got teachers who believe in you and wish that all your dreams go Kindergarten, an awesome crew of 28, our year together has been great. From ABCs and 123s to reading books and skip counting with ease. You found a friend, each and every one, making discoveries, finding beach treasures and having lots of fun. Laughter, smiles and class cheers, special memories to remember the years. Every Friday, classrooms filled with dancing feet as each kindergartner discovered their very own beat. How we've loved watching you learn and grow, taking risks to share your observations and all that you know. You're off to great places, today is your day. Grade one is waiting and you're on your way. From KB and KS, truth and courage, do your best.
grade one. Grade one started with having to adapt to a socially distanced classroom, no group work or carpet time, and a whole lot of hand sanitizer. But the grade one showed that they could be flexible and persevere through unusual times. They began the year discovering how to live a balanced life filled with academics, athletics, and making healthy choices. They came to understand the importance of washing their hands to avoid germs and how to regulate their feelings and emotions through guided meditation, yoga, and using their wits. They spent time learning about their families and discovering different family cultures. Neither one of the units could be happen without the help of many families coming in to share their cultures and teach all about their roles in the community. Through various experiments, the students came to understand the different forms of light and sound and learned to make predictions and conclusions. They each became experts on the features and behaviors of a local animal and collaborated with partners to build outstanding habitats from recycled objects in the new Innovation Lab. Hiking revealed their hidden talent as they clambered up to the top of Mount Doug for our unit on local plants with nothing but smiles and laughs. In their final inquiry of how to express themselves, the grade ones showcased their talents as actors and communicators through the Reader's Theatre and carefully curated performances of a fractured fairy tale. Along the way, they showed immense growth in asking meaningful questions and came up with in-depth wonderings. Mrs. Graham and Miss Vilgate cannot express how grateful they are for the opportunity to teach this lovely group of students. You will be greatly missed and they look forward to watching each and one of you succeed in grade two. Grade 2. It was mostly a stronger together year in Grade 2. We learned that communities are shaped by the diversity of their people. We identified communities that welcomed those differences, like GNS, and recognized how fortunate we are to live in a diversity-friendly place like Canada. We learned that Canada's breathtakingly beautiful geography inspires creativity, even the sticks and stones, from sea to shining sea, this land is your land, this land is my land. We learned that in Canada, many people get to meet their basic needs and fill a lot of their wants too. This comes with big responsibility and social conscience. With our marketplace profits, we raise money for 10 local and worldwide organizations that help people meet their basic needs. We learned that we are fortunate to live in a water-rich rich country like Canada. Water, water is not everywhere though. We have to protect and conserve our precious water so that it will last for another five billion years. We learned about Canada's wildlife and how each and every animal is necessary to keep the Jenga Tower of Nature strong and balanced, especially the salmon. We understood that although some choices humans make can hurt, can hurt animals, there are so many choices we can make to help animals. Throughout our learning journey, we danced and we sang and laughed a lot, celebrated our home reading with weekly dubbings by Queen Catherine, stocked Goldstream with salmon, cleaned up the beach, shared our talents and treated each other respectfully. And through it all, we never lost sight of how lucky and thankful we were to be together 
at our beautiful new Beach Drive campus during this extraordinary COVID year. To the First Nations on whose traditional territories we lived, learned and worked and played, we say Haishkwa. Grade three. It's been a busy, productive, and unique year in grade three. The first term started with seeing old friends and making new friendships, physically distanced, of course. We learned new rules to keep us safe and sanitized wherever we went. In class, we looked within ourselves and thought about what we value and made connections with our values to the First Nations peoples. We went on to learn about signs and symbols and how they help us navigate our world. We showcased our original signs and with each other and a few special guests and everyone became more aware of how signs and symbols keep us safe. The second term had us looking into cultures of the world, including our own. The display of our culture boxes highlighted just how different and similar we all are. We then learned that matter does matter as we explore the Earth's changing landforms and the effects of erosion. We even made models of how we could stop the erosion at the beach beside GNS. Our third term had us inquiring into the impact of technology on our lives, and we created our own sustainable inventions. Our biodiversity unit found us exploring local ecosystems with clipboards and iPads in hand to document all of our findings. And this doesn't even begin to cover all the amazing opportunities we adjusted to fit our new reality guest speakers and science experiments on Google Meet, drama activities with grades 10, 11s and 12s, hiking elk and beaver lake, connecting with schools across Canada with backyard bio, and of course, the grade three extravaganza. Thanks to all the students for being so resilient and persevering through this challenging year. Our 10 months together have been filled with learning, laughter and fun with so many memories that will last a, life last a lifetime. If Miss McCall and Miss Selawanek have as much fun as we did, we know that they have an absolutely fabulous year with you.
Grade 4. When Mrs. McCall and Miss Selwanek think about grade 4s, one word stands out. Amazing. This has been far from a normal school year. Desks in rows, spaced two meters apart, masks on faces and constant hand sanitizing are just a few things that have made this year unique and somewhat challenging. These grade fours haven't skipped a beat. They adapt to changes without hesitation and have had the most positive attitudes no matter what was thrown their way. These grade fours are sure to change the world. They've figured out how to accept multiple opinions and perspectives. They've learned how to start and continue a ripple effect of kindness. They have created light bulbs, made popcorn kernels dance, and created inventions using renewable energy, taken action to save our planet, and so much more. Our world is in good hands with these incredible humans as part of its future. So much fun with Rubik's Cubes, for airplanes, dance clubs, and beach shops. Mrs. McCall and Miss Selimonic will miss you all so much, but we know for next year at least, you will still be here with us at the beach. You are sure to be an incredible leaders for our school next year. Mrs. Stark and Mrs. Wallace, you are in for a treat. Grade 5. Time is a strange concept. It seems to simultaneously an age ago, but only yesterday, that we set up our classroom in anticipation of a new year. Brand new school, 10 new students, new routines. There was a lot of new this year, some of it more exciting than others. Throughout it all, your children showed adaptability and grace under pressure. Stronger together, indeed. A spirit of generosity and kindness amongst the students was evident in our Willows Beach days, and it showed that your children felt grateful for the in-person learning that we were able to experience. Students worked in teams to solve problems, in cooperative games, encouraged each other to try new poses in yoga, and assisted each other making survival bracelets with Ms. Fletcher. Parents' support during our units of inquiry has been truly outstanding. We enjoyed listening to unprecedented levels of expertise from environmental planning to heart surgery, launching of satellites, climate change, school governance, navigating local government red tape, neonatal medicine, perspectives on immigration from around the world, and osteopathy. Your support was a breath of fresh air in a year when so many of our experiential trips were either cancelled or held virtually. 
Book Battles brought a new level to our book challenge this year with student groups reading the same titles and creating questions to ask in a culminating game. Students took it upon themselves to set goals, discuss genres, and provide evidence from the text. We believe they leave us with a stronger understanding of reading for enjoyment, not to mention a love and an appreciation for poetry. Stand out was the level of excitement and enthusiasm which our, your children approached their exhibition. They understood that we were adapting the process to meet COVID protocols and wove a dose of tolerance into their activities. The children worked hard in groups and partners and some as individuals to inquire into their issues. They overcame nerves and technical issues to present to their schoolmates as well as recording their findings for the community. As the days became sunnier and summer peaked around the corner, we took every opportunity to get outside using the beach as inspiration for observational writing, poetry, mindfulness and reading. Luckily, we were able to go on a few outdoor trips as well, such as hiking Mackenzie Bight, biking to Gonzales Hill and up those stairwell, and taking the Voyager canoes to Jimmy Chicken Island. And so we returned to the beginning, the strange properties of time. One thing is for sure, your children came to us as elementary students, but are leaving us emotionally and cognitively more mature, ready to start their brand new adventure in grade six. Our final piece of business today is presenting the house trophy. Mr. Monkey asked if he could do this part. Yay! I'm so excited to be telling you about the house points. In fourth place is Kester McKenzie with 2,870 points. Yay! In third place is Wyndham Douglas with 3,315 points. Yay for you! In second place is Darren Fraser with 3,428 points. Woohoo, Dam! And finally, in first place, with 3,334 points, is Walsingham Thompson. Yay! Now, everybody keeps asking my Grammy what house she was in, and she never, ever would tell anyone. But now she's leaving, she let me tell you that she was actually in Walsingham Thompson. So she loves the greenhouse, but she loves all the other houses too. So yay for all the houses, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the parade this morning. And now it's time for me to say goodbye. I have loved working with my Grammy, but we are on to new adventures next year. We will miss you all so much, but there are bananas to eat, trips to the jungle to make, and big trees to climb. You will love Miss Shea, your new principal. I have met her and she is so nice. In the meantime, you to wish you all the best to you and your teachers and they will look forward to seeing you in, in September. Goodbye everybody! My Grammy and I send you all our love. Goodbye! Now please stand for the school song.
Okay, Mr. Monkey and I watched the video in assembly yesterday and we loved it so much that we thought we would have a repeat today. Huge thanks to the Round Square Club for showing what a great school we have and wishing you all a great summer. Bye for me and bye for Mr. Monkey! Bye! Cause I'm in the stars tonight So watch me bring the fire set the night light Shoes on, get up in the morning, cup of milk, let's rock and roll Kink out, kick the drum, rolling on like a rolling stone Sing song when I'm walking home, jump up to the top of the brown Ding dong, call me on my phone, nice tea and I'll get my ping pong Na 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 na